You are listening to Open Democracy. Every week, a journalist is killed just for doing their job, for holding power to account, or because their reporting uncovered a truth that someone wants hidden. In eight out of ten cases, there's no justice. Killing the Truth explores the cases of four remarkable journalists who paid the ultimate price. I'm Penny Dale. This time, India and the death and life of Gauri Lankesh. This government is anti-Muslim, this government is anti-Christian, this government is anti-Dalit, anti-women, anti-left, anti-progressive forces. This is Gauri Lankesh, speaking out against the current right-wing BJP government of Narendra Modi. She stood more than anything else for a sense of absolute fearlessness. She never lost sight of the ability and the need to communicate and build bridges. She was very concerned about the people. She was very compassionate. And whatever she could see from her bare eyes and whatever she could see from her heart, she used to respond to that. And that response was never it was artificial. She used to go all in, you know. First thing that comes to my mind when I think of Gauri is... uh, she was a very loving, warm, full of joy and joie de vivre, as you call it. She was all of five foot tall and small built. She was very brave. Slight of frame, quick of movement, always that brimming mischief in her eyes, compassion in her eyes and a very beautiful smile. Gowri was born in January 1962 in Bangalore, in the southwestern state of Karnataka. Her father was a celebrated poet, fiction writer, playwright and journalist, P. Lankesh. He wrote in the local language of Canada and he set up a publication he named Lankesh Patrike. Gowri followed in her father's journalism footsteps, but she moved to Delhi and worked in television and for other English-language publications. I'm Kavita Lankesh, I'm a filmmaker, and I'm uh, Gauri Lankesh's sister. When my father passed away in 2000, she came down to Bangalore, and it was kind of thrust upon her to take up his paper, though she was very reluctant to do so. My father was such a big, what you would call, like a banyan tree, so it was very difficult for her to even think of taking over the newspaper which she was running, which was highly popular at that time. But she did take it up uh, because uh, she believed in uh, his idealisms, which is basically for harmony and secularism in the country, anti-corruption, pro-Muslim, pro-minorities, all this she believed in. And she took it up. And in fact, um, in the beginning, she would write in English and people would translate it for her to Canada. And gradually, within a matter of two years, she could master the language so well that she would correct other people's spellings and everything. She would edit and correct it. So she's, she was good at that. I'm Tista Settlevard. Gauri and my relationship is both as a fellow journalist, a dear friend and a fellow traveller in terms of activism of different kinds. Just like Gauri Lankesh, I moved from quote-unquote the mainstream media to niche journalism and began publication of a journal in August 93, Communalism Combat. And she regularly contributed to it, writing about human rights and the processes that have led to the dilution of democracy and majoritarianism within India. The very, very bloody and othering politics of uh, sectarian violence, which in India we call communalism, when there's targeted mass violence against religious minorities, for instance. Kauri, before year 2000 and the year after 2000, is when she made that seminal leap, as I always say, when she moved from the relatively cloistered and elite world of English language journalism to writing in her mother tongue. And it was that communication every week in her columns that reached corners of Karnataka, the state where she lived, that made her voice echo and her name an iconic one. First in her father's journal, Lankesh Patrike, and then after 2005-2006 in Gauri Lankesh Patrike. 
uh, spoke to this audience every week passionately raising issues provoking thought demanding action she moved uh, closer to the friends who actually were on the ground and she became more uh, humane in her approach i should say it is a kind of journey from sympathy to empathy i am shivsundar i am an activist basically and i am also a columnist for gauri lankesh magazine gauri was an activist journalist let me define what i mean by that both journalism and activism is a kind of a journey to find the truth and if journalism is only to write about the truth the activism is about the transformation it's about the ideals that should be established and it's about a struggle against the forces which are against those ideals she was combined with those two things whatever she wrote in her paper she wanted to actually bring those changes in the society in the form of struggle sometimes it was on the streets sometimes it was on the social media sometimes it was with the government sometimes it was in the courts she fought for one tribal village for instance where they were forcibly evicted from a forest 3000 people were left homeless and she went there and talked to them wrote about it then she came here talked to the chief minister here and made sure now there there's about 580 houses built there that's kavita again who has made a film about her sister's life as part of the a safer world for the truth campaign which documents and seeks justice for the killings of journalists we shared the office building in fact she i was in the second floor and she was in the first floor the same building when i go there i would find her talking to some young couple maybe who are intercaste and one muslim one hindu in love and how do we you know <laughs> go ahead with the marriage and how do we convince their parents she was very very passionate about everything like that you know anything to be secular and open and harmonious always for the minority the poor women's rights the transgender people and i think gauri was a bridge like that she connected so many dots i think you know so i'm amazed the kind of uh, things she has done the number of people she has touched and i think she's passionate about every one of them all this was very evident i felt and the kind of people who turned up when she was assassinated I am Aditya Bharadwaj. I am a journalist with over ten years' experience covering crime and other issues in Bangalore. I knew Gauri as a senior colleague in the field, and I had interacted with her several times. If we chart out Gauri Lankesh's career in Kannada journalism from 2000, it goes parallel to the rise of. Hindutva right wing in Karnataka Hindutva is a political ideology of the extreme right wing BJP party that has been in power since 2014 Its ultimate aim is to transform India from a constitutionally secular state into a Hindu state or a Hindu rashtra in which some Indians will be more equal than others The Hindutva ideology is very different from Hinduism which accepts that other religions should exist side by side in society. Supporters of Hindutva are often aggressive and violent towards anyone who argues against their ideology of Hindu supremacy. And Gauri Lankesh was vehemently and publicly opposed to it. In 12th century we had Baswana. Baswana was a 12th century poet philosopher. statesman and a social and religious reformer who spoke much before marx about the dignity of labor about equality about rationality and um, specifically against brahmin hegemony but today all those who claim to be basavarna's followers are bjp followers totally against whatever basavarna stood for death threats has become a common factor in karnataka in the name of culture and protection of women or attacks on liberals and leftists in the name of hindutva gauri was speaking about death threats in her home state just months before she was killed but it's not just happening there india is one of the most hostile and dangerous places for journalists to work in 
as Aditya explains. If you are critical of the incumbent regime, of their ideology, you are a target for systematic online trolling campaigns, raids from taxmen, there may be false cases that may be hoisted on you. There is a journalist who has been arrested under terror laws. Journalism may itself be criminalized. That is the fear. And uh, like in Gauri's case, you can even be killed. The kind of India we live in today, it's, it's a sinister place. It's not an easy place. That's Tista again, who edits the monthly Communalism Combat magazine. And yet, I must say, journalists are still trying and uh, brave independent platforms have emerged in multiple languages. Despite these intimidations, despite criminal cases, despite sedition cases being lodged against journalists, despite deaths, and we've had 20 deaths in the last one and a half years alone. Brave, independent. That was Gowrie's kind of journalism. A pen like Gowrie was a threat to those who believe that, you know, questioning authority is not your democratic right. And what you need to do is succumb and be silenced to authoritarianism of, of a very unique and scary kind. I remember amongst Gauri's last columns, she had taken on the extremely anti-people policies of the central government at the center that came into power in 2014. She wrote about the debilitating demonetization policy that completely killed India's informal sector. She wrote about the caste that she was born to, the Lingayat caste, and the demand that sections of the Lingayats have of being treated separate from the Hindu religion. Eclectic. So much writing. Her refusal not to say and speak and write what she deeply believed in. Her life was testimony to that, as was her brutal, sinister killing. Gauri Lankesh was murdered in Bangalore on the 5th of September, 2017. So that day I very distinctly remember that I was in the newsroom in the Hindu newspaper where I work. The TV broke the news that Gauri Lankesh was attacked by gunmen. Within a few minutes I got a confirmation that she was actually dead. Senior journalist Gauri Lankesh has been shot dead. Going across to our reporter joining me from Bengaluru. Any details that the police have about her assailants? Well, the incident has happened just about uh, 10 to 15 minutes back and the police presence can be seen at this point in time. Catchy details still, but this seems to be another uh, case that the government will have to uh, own up and answer for uh, because it was known that uh, Gauri Lankesh is somebody who had uh, lived under threat. Oh God, it still sort of brings, uh, I mean, it shivers and I, I just can't even believe it even now. I get this call from a dear lawyer friend in Delhi and she said, I don't know, I hope it's not true, but I've just heard that Gauri Lankesh, your, your dear friend has been shot. And I mean, I just blanked out for two seconds and then I was freaking out. I was putting on the television and calling anybody and everybody I could think of phones were ringing through or they were just constantly busy and engaged. So I think it was about 20-25 minutes later that I actually got through to Shiv Sundar and I said, is it, is it true? It can't be true. He said, it's true. Gauri was assassinated, I think, somewhere in between 7.50 and 8 p.m. on September 5th night. And there were hundreds of phone calls coming from all over the country and all over Karnataka and Bangalore to know what happened. When I reached... Some hundreds of people had already assembled there, people from the neighborhood and uh, Indira Lankesh, uh, Gauri's mother. Kavita was there. I would play badminton very near to her house actually. So I'd gone to play and I'd just finished and I was coming back and uh, my mother called me in fact, said uh, something has happened to Gauri. Apparently she's fallen down, can you go and check what happened? And my first thought was... She would always be obsessed about things. She would eat very late into the night and then and morning no breakfast. So I thought maybe she's had some low blood pressure. Maybe she's fainted. Uh, the worst case scenario is it some heart attack. I still remember I was about just about 100 meters away from her house. I got a call from one of the television stations, the channels and said, uh, they asked me, Madam, I believe Gauri shot. Uh, what do you know about it? I, my mind had gone numb. What is this shawl? Who, who could shoot her? Her house has a main gate 
she had parked her car in front of the gate and she had opened her door and immediately a first bullet was shot at her and she actually ran inside the compound to the inner gate at the veranda i think three more shots were shot at her which two actually pierced through her heart and abdomen and immediately she actually fell down right in front of the inner door and uh, within a span of 10 seconds she lost her life that body was lying there when i i mean police had already cordoned off the area but still uh, some of us could uh, go in and uh, see the body was lying there it was a it was a very anyway mm, it is difficult to actually recollect those things you know in fact uh, there is a guilt in remembering her in fact we all the colleagues and the activists friends of gauri always think that how could she be targeted when we all there we are one full time activists you know people came and stuck their camera and their mic but actually i didn't speak that day i i couldn't believe she was gone i couldn't believe somebody could kill this frail small little woman rather it's just horrible it's very very traumatic for me it was a blur the only thing that struck me at one point was i was just sitting outside she was taken away for post mortem the investigation people were still inside the house looking at the cctv or whatever even that i i haven't been able to see it till today i, I don't think i'll ever be able to see that but i remember it started raining and uh, it's such a picture because they had made the markings what do you call that uh, around uh, when she was found uh, murdered and it started raining and the chalk marks started fading away and i remember gauri's friends or comrades they all started shouting a slogan those who kill gandhi kill gauri What the hundreds of people who had gathered at Gary's house meant was that in 1948, Mahatma Gandhi, one of India's independence leaders, was assassinated by Hindu extremists. And so was Gary. The investigation was to prove them right and bring to light some shocking details. Aditya the crime reporter on the hindu newspaper who covered gary's murder from day 1 and gary's sister kavita take us through what the investigation uncovered it was a meticulous assassination because they didn't use the phone there was no leads from one to one it's shocking to know my sister lived alone in a little remote place a very quiet place which she loved and they took one year on following her to kill this 5 foot woman and killed her so meticulously that the police and the whole investigation team was really clueless about it it looked like they were all floundering in the dark and nothing was happening in the beginning after almost 6 months or 8 months i think the first break came they were planning to assassinate somebody else another writer and through that link the whole kind of thing unraveled quickly after that within a matter of one year the police have concluded that members of a goa based hindu supremacist cult like organization sanatan sanstha and its sister organization hindu janjagriti samiti members associated with these two organizations actually conspired formed a gang and actually were behind the murder of gauri lankesh the charge sheet says that uh, these members were inspired by a book published by sanatan sanstha called kshatra dharma sadhana which is compiled by the group's founder uh, dr jayant balaji athavale the book actually talks of the end of kali yuga this epoch of time and the onset of satya yuga another epoch of truth and uh, satya yuga is conflated with hindu rashtra in other literature of the group so 
the book says that evil doers must be punished and spiritual seekers must be protected to advance the onset of this satyuga gauri was one of the people who was branded as an evil doer because she spoke out against hindu nationalism there was this guy called parashuram wagmore who who pulled the trigger on my sister apparently he was shown one of her speeches against hindutva not hinduism but now death threats has become a common factor in karnataka in the name of culture and protection of women or attacks on liberals and leftists in the name of hindutva you know he was shown this video on loop almost which made him think that she hated hindus and not hindutva there's a difference between that and not many people seem to know that and he didn't know apparently that she was a journalist or anything at all audio and video was shown to him going on that she hates hindus so you should protect hinduism you should kill her and also now it has come to light that three others were also killed Uh, by the same gang and there was a hit list that was uh, recovered by the police from uh, these accused who were arrested and it had names of 35 writers and activists from across the country nine from karnataka and 26 from various parts of the state from punjab to tamil nadu so the very spectre of 35 writers being targeted itself is very shocking and it tells a lot about the country the politics and the environment today in the country and it is also concerning she was an embodiment of values that the right wing forces never actually appreciated shiv sunda gary's work colleague and her friend she was a single woman she was bold modern secular she was a kind of direct challenge to the patriarchal regressive values polarizing the society her uh, magazine every week every page and every sentences was a challenge in so many ways in the cultural front political front economic front literary front in every aspect it was a weekly challenge and a woman with such a boldness challenging the regime was something these people could not actually digest and uh, you should know that her magazine did not receive any advertisement from the government from the corporate so there was no control it was a free thinking magazine so nothing could silence her gary's murder was says tista a chilling chilling message to silence critics of this regime and more extreme regimes that might follow to silence her particularly as an individual given what she stood for but also to, to send a message to everybody that you know don't speak up too much don't try and make a big hoo-ha about this because we this organization that according to me should be declared unlawful sanatan sansta they will teach you a lesson because we stand for a hindu theocratic state and what is this democracy what is this constitution that you talk about 17 people have been charged in Gary's murder case. They are being detained in remand under organized crime laws which are non-bailable. But one of the suspects argued that because he had not committed a crime before, he should be granted bail. Kavita explains why she decided to go to the Supreme Court to stop this happening. You know, it's not just Gauri's case. Throughout India, any case like this, if they have committed the crime just the first time, then they'll be out on bail. Being out on bail in India can be till they're dead, they can be out on bail. And, you know, partying, having a ball, killing, maybe planning more murders. You know, it's never going to end. My sister is not going to get justice. Kavita won the Supreme Court case, but it's been four years since Gauri was murdered and the trial has not yet started. until it does the whole truth behind gary's killing won't be known hemme inda helutivi hemme inda helutivi the country erupted in protest when she was assassinated in small towns in different languages from the northeast of india to the west of india to the south of india to the kashmir you know her as killing and assassination aroused people in a way that few things have done in recent years 
And this, Tista imagines, is how Gowrie might have reacted. I can almost see her laughing about it and being mischievous about it. Say, see what I could do, getting all this support and all this protest. Where the crowd chanted, Sister, you are not alone. We are proud to say, I am Gowrie. It's so important to keep telling her story because she remains an inspiration for women, for men, for young, for old, for transgenders, for LGBTQ, for all Adivasis, for indigenous people, for Dalits, for all manner of people because she stood for them. She somehow became their voice in her life and in her death. I think Gauri will continue to live for as long as people are there who still care for secularism and harmony in the country. That way, she is with us. Kavita, Tista and Shivsunda ending Killing the Truth, the case of Gauri Lankesh. This is an open democracy production in partnership with A Safer World for the Truth. Original music and sound design by Lee Sperry. Episode research by Anita Morithi. Written and produced by me, Penny Dale. been listening to a podcast supported by Open Democracy. If you liked it, please consider making a small donation to help us do more. As a small media organisation, Open Democracy relies on the backing of people like you to keep going. Go to opendemocracy.net now to support our work. And one more thing, to avoid missing out on future episodes, don't forget to subscribe to this show in your favourite podcast app.